I'm going to continue reading in this book that I wrote, nonfiction, Molasses Moon. And this is my Kindle Fire that I'm reading it on. And I showed out the page turning and that type of thing yesterday. Or actually, I don't know, it was yesterday for me, but whenever you view this, that'll be up to you. Hmm. So yesterday I left off with um, talking about Hegel, and we're still in the preface of Molasses Moon. Who knows, or maybe he was a prankster too. Actually, now that I do understand the German Hegel a bit, and how the Russian Karl Marx purposely warped Hegel's in dialectical materialism philosophy as a springboard for new economic theories. Now that I do sort of understand Marx's red ideas, I swear a blue streak at them. This has nothing to do with blue contacts. According to my college philosophy, Hegel did not mean his concepts to be applied to societies of people and their economic systems. But what I see as one of the unfortunate end results, is that Marx's manifesto masses humanity into a gelatinous, blubbering blob, feeding off itself, because it has no motivation to go find or make food. Spirit moves, is motivated, by individual desire. Without individuality, does dot desire does not exist. Also, if there is no possibility of that individual satisfying his own desire through his own efforts, desire dies. Only need remains. The heart of communism heralds from each according to his ability to each according to his need. Need without desire is not much of a motivator, and without motivation, ability is useless. In some ways, I question that necessity is the only mother of invention. I think desire, spirit, and creative urges play vital roles there. Now, when you mix desire with necessity and a good possibility of success, you have a winner, truly, as well as a fun game to play. You may be getting clues that the conspiracy is somehow mixed up in here. You're right. But we'll move on. I've got my soapbox out. No use wasting it. Firing, kindling, not canceling hiring, and maintaining motivation isn't a simple task. It'll take more than a few paragraphs to get it. Remember, though, that motivation is the key to the issue of communism versus capitalism. So speaking of capitalism, I'll pass on being a blob. I'd rather be a lone boob myself. Better yet, a lone wolf, driving my Rolls Royce to my castle in the country. All of which I will have earned. Ruff, ruff, woof, woof. I may need a chauffeur. It's hard to hang on to a steering wheel with paws. I could use my jaws, but then it would be hard to watch the traffic at the same time. I'm sure you can see other problems, too, of a wolf driving a rolls, even in the country. Yes, the communists and I are on opposite sides of the fence, ours. The world looks clearer to me from my side, as I gaze across my very own miles of rolling mountain meadow grasses. They're in my imaginary future. I had called my preface an introduction to the strange and rare occurrence of an individual mind thinking and disagreeing in low growls from under a gold-studded capitalist easy chair. Someone may one day use my thoughts as a trampoline to bounce off his own ideas just so he gets me right and pays me royalties. But I'm not sure 
I have myself right. So why should I care? I plan to be filthy rich anyway. As I mentioned, though, since right now I'm not so flush, I'm going to uncover, I'm going undercover, to root out a bland brigade conspiracy. I'll be using an alias at times, that of Maya Jim, the main character of my works of fiction. And I'll use a cover story, my Maya Genesis tale. She started out in the first draft of my novel saying that she was from another planet, Paradise. You could have met her if you were really an angel. And that she was beautiful, perfectly completed, aware. She ended with me on earth, falling down my attic stairs as I bounced on a not-too-skinny, lumpy butt. Why did she, I, end like that? And where were you when I needed you? Maya's perfect. I'm not at all. You can identify with me, so I can take you with me back to the stars, to regain the spice, fizz, fire, freedom, and fun. Still want to come? You may have to slide through a little quantum physics en route. Every good defect detective has to know his cues and mind his P's, but don't worry, I'll do the calculations. I used to know how to, how to use a slide rule. I do know where I am once I get past Earth's atmosphere. There are no computers up there, unless you're in a spaceship. I've been out there in the ozone on brain waves, often. Actually, I'm a regular customer. I made the hole by sneezing once. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't, at least I didn't yawn. I do that in my writing, too. Speaking of viewing things from different angles and perspectives and getting back to ground zero, it's true this preface will take on another light after you read Molasses Moon and my other gem books. But it's bright enough in here now for this introduction to show you whether you want to be begin the journey and to prepare you. Even though this book is cursed and dangerous, as I've warned, it doesn't take courage or even intelligence to read it. Not really. You may need some intelligence and courage to understand it, however. Speaking of courage, I like the color yellow. It happens to be my favorite right now. I'm not a coward, though. Anyone who knows what they're doing ahead of time and goes ahead and gets born on Earth anyway has courage. They may be crazy, too. Don't get nervous. I don't know where I was before I was born. Do you? I know you don't know where I was, but do you know where you were? That's the question. I should say I don't know where I was before I was conceived. Maybe nowhere. Maybe I does begin at conception. So does consciousness begin with a sperm and an egg? Damned if I know. I don't remember that far back. But I can speculate. Yes, I can speculate about a lot of things. I'm not always right. Okay, I'll give you a hint on how to alter reality. As a detective on a dangerous, impossible mission, you may need to know. After all, someone or something trying to take the fizz, the fuzz, fizz, fun out of life could have quite an arsenal. So to change reality, remember, first, there's a cue during which time pauses nearly imperceptibly to give you time to think, but not much time, so don't dally. Second, there's a conception, a slight awareness of what's going on, as in the light bulb, dim though it may be. Third, comes the choice, after which time starts on its merry way again with you in tow, off in whatever direction or on whatever tangent you've chosen. Got it? No? Not to worry. No worries, mate. 
I'll explain more later as we go. Remember, Q, conception, choice. Okay, here's your Q. The real one, spelled by me with a Q rather than a C. For an important reason you'll see later. I'll start slow and easy. Establish my cover first. You'll have plenty of time to get ready for the quarks, quantums, and cues. Q in this context is a term I made up myself, spelling as well as meaning. Explanations later, dude. Want to come? If I were you, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Maybe I'll be giving you a quantum bit of the world by adding to comprehension of it. Ready? Yes? Okay, here we go. We'll start the first chapter as if the book began there and I didn't know you were on my shoulder. For those who don't read prefaces. But you'll have a head start, as well as insider information. See? I reward readers of my introductions. We're off to see the wizard while flying through the light with a mission. That's the end of the preface. Maybe you can see. Let's try it. Mm. Not very well. And the beginning of chapter one it shows really good in real life, though, on the Kindle Fire. Chapter one, forty-six, and still climbing out of the pit. I'll read just a little into this. Many moons ago, I began writing fiction. It wasn't pure fiction, because I put a lot of my own truth in it. Conclusions as to why I'm here. Some facts about my own life. Some opinions about yours. Not that I want to tell you how to live. I might want to, but it wouldn't do any good, so I won't. Except once in a while. What I'm writing here is pure non-fiction. I have my reasons for deciding to finally tell the truth, more or less. I don't mean to hedge here. I don't. I won't tell less than the truth. It's just that I couldn't tell the whole truth in a whole lifetime. But I can tell a part of it. Take my pontificating preaching for what it's worth. You probably paid under $30 for this book, unless it remains available for ages or becomes a collector's item. My bits of what to do and how to, what I did and how, are probably not worth much more than that, except for laughs. I don't know about you, but for me, laughs are worth a lot. They're not only spice, but lie. I'll warn you in advance in case you wonder who I am and why you should listen. I don't have a doctorate in a damn thing, or a holy one either. I'm not a card-carrying scientist or religious leader, for God's sake or mine. Many of them are pseudo anyway, jumping to conclusions like green beans. I'm not pseudo. I'm not fake either. I'm real. Just ask M. Jennifer O'Reilly, her heroine in my fiction sextet. That's the project I began many moons ago. You'll have to find your own reasons for whether or why I'm worth hearing. Maybe my not having doctoral degrees is a plus. You don't have to revere me as an authority. You can take me for what I'm worth and shut the book or turn off your Kindle. Note interjected from 2009. When you've had enough. It's too bad people couldn't do that more often with authorities. I'll also apologize for having a bachelor's with several hours toward a master's degree in humanities and English. I taught high school English in Oregon and near enough hours for a master's in psychology and philosophy. After several years private research and sporadic classwork outside the cautious university setting, I awarded myself a degree in parapsychology and practiced as an astrologer, tarot reader, numerologist, and teacher of matter under mind. Yes, I did. I even followed my own teachings, still do, practice, preach, and follow myself around, but in secret, and mostly in front of my computer. 
I'm not legally new age anymore, especially after reading Atlas Shrugged. I'm not young, vibrant, sweet-natured, or positive either. I'm old and crotchety. Make no bones about it. Okay, I think I'll pause again here and see how we did and come back later maybe.